All right, day three. Here we go. I was fucking drugged. Oh, I'm so stupid. I can't believe I did that. Like what? Hello? Oh. Ah. What? I'm. I'm back in my room. Oh. My head is pounding. What happened last night? Oh, what? Oh shit, bro. Yo. Yo. What? Oh fuck! Bro, I hate this game, yo. Why? My god. God, he found me. Quickly, I tried to get out of bed, stumbling onto the floor as I, as the pounding in my head started to grow. Ugh! Fucking! Lucy? Lucy! I need to talk to <laughs> talk with you! I called out, fighting past the hangover as I tried to walk out of my room. Who could that be? If that's that fucker, I'm gunning it. I don't care if I have to go through the a window. Coming! Coming! Quickly making my way towards the door, I take in a deep breath and look through the people. Oh! And Lord? Sir! Sorry about that, I thought you were someone else. Paranoid enough to answer the door, huh? Sorry. Anyway, have you seen Lucy anywhere? I'm still not done talking to her about you kids and your 420 time. I know scented candles when I smell one and that shit ate it. Um, yeah, she was here last night. I mumbled recalling the previous night, but she wasn't around when I woke up. Maybe the cra- maybe she crashed in her room? Lulu, up and at him. We need to talk. There's no answer, no yelling, no usual grumbling, or throwing anything at the door in response. Damn it. He huffs, jiggling the doorknob for a moment as a warning before opening the door. Damn, her room's small compared to mine. She's not here? Does she normally leave a note or something? He asks, walking in and starting to look over papers that are scattered all over the place. No, but she usually makes coffee for both of us every morning. I see. Does she keep her phone on her often? She's never without it. Good. I'll check my Rolodex and see if I can get a hold of her. What the fuck is a Rolodex? <laughs> oh, what was that there? Was that, I don't know, ex? Friend? Best friend? Bestie. Saying this, the landlord walks out of Lucy's room, closing the door behind me once I'm out as well. Seems I might need to give her a few hints in job searching as well. He says mainly to himself. Why? All those papers, their job applications dating back to four months ago. There's a ping of guilt in my gut. He says this. I mistreated Lucy so bad lately, and she she wasn't half-ass excuses, uh, making half-ass excuses about not getting any callbacks after all. Anyway, I'll give her a call. If she doesn't pick up, just let's just pray she comes by later. I might have an opening for her. Saying this, the landlord takes his leave. Standing there for a moment, biting my bottom lip and entertaining the idea of calling Lucy as well to apologize, even talk about what happened last night. Uh, then again, she probably wouldn't like the fact that the landlord and I have been in her room. <laughs> it's bad enough. I have a stalker on my tail. I should probably tell the landlord about this. Maybe he can do something. Maybe he'll snap a twig his toy body into pieces. Anyway, I'd better take a shower and get dressed. I gotta figure out how I'm gonna get out of this mess. Well, the shower doesn't help me get my mind off things. It does, however, help with that kink in my back, so that's something. 
Hey, chill. Oh, please let it be Lucy. I mumble, picking up my phone and looking at the caller ID. Oh, right, TK. How do I explain all of this to them? Biting my bottom lip, I answer the phone. Hey, TK. I meant to call, but things got weird. Yeah, and they went from weird to worse over here. What do you mean? It's been a fucking murder over here. Some poor soul got stabbed multiple times and stuffed in the freezer. What? Oh my god, what? Holy shit, are you alright? As alright I'll, as I'll ever be with how low a point this day has gotten. Oh jeez, don't move. I'll be right over. I don't wait for a response as I hang up the phone. I hope that bastard isn't the cause of it. Obviously, this scene attracts a few people, but where's TK? Late as ever. Classic Quinn. Yo, I'm pretty punctual, man. I don't know. I don't, I don't know about this lady right here named Quinn, bro. Like, what? Ah, sorry. I was entirely... What? I wasn't entirely dressed when you called. Mmm. Kinky. <laughs> what the fuck? What does that even... What? What does he imply by that? Not now. Anyways, what happened? Well, when Kit Kat and I got here to open up, the back door was busted open. We thought it was just a break-in at first. So we called the cops to come over and look around. One of them found a trail leading to the freezer and, well, yeah, a body. Jesus. Jesus. Is anyone, is it anyone you know? No, I don't think so. Just then, the officer comes out calling TK over. Of course, TK responds by rolling their eyes. Well, looks like I'm gonna undergo some questioning. I'll be right back. Okay. Good luck. As I watch my coworker who makes their way over towards the officer, the man looking a little pale, possibly his first homicide case. I start looking around the area. Maybe there's family or loved ones who might have known this person. Unfortunately, my eyes catch a glimpse of someone in the alley across the street. A familiar lanky bastard with a big old smile on his face. I'm not going to keep running from this creep. If I need to beat him down myself, fine. I start making my way across the street, making sure no rubber necks hit me as they pass by. Oh, he seems in a good mood. Because you fucking drugged me last night and you got to hold me, you fucking creep. The bastard has a lot of nerve to look happy to see me, and to me, to see me storm over to him. Hey there, Sunspot. Everything okay? You look very upset. Am I okay? You're the reason I quit my job, and now my friend has to deal with a murder as well. You were in my apartment last night, weren't you? Did you do this too? What? Bruh. Yes. I say nothing as I storm right past him, not even giving him a glance. W wait! He nearly calls out as he grabs onto my arm, pulling me back and gripping both of my shoulders. Let go of me! I yell, trying to pull away from his from this psychopath. Don't you get it? I can't. Haven't you been paying attention to what's been going on? Can't you pick up the slightest of hints that I'm meant to be with you? That I would kill to get your attention. Oh my god. Bro, was that wordplay right there? That I would kill. No, 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 no. What are you talking about? The freak's grip. The freak's grip on me loose. What the fuck? The freak's grip. On Bro. I can't read that, bro. His expression now gentles as he cups my cheek. I don't know why I couldn't read that. Oh, Quinn. I love you. But you're not very bright. Ex fucking excuse me? Think about it. The moment we were at the park, 
those times I saw you at the diner. How would how you would always leave your window closed no matter how many times I've opened it at night. Your perfectly sized closet. You You were stalking me? You blame me? You're the one who's always on my mind. The one who makes my heart beat out of my chest each time I see you. Smell you. You want the truth? The truth is I'm mad. Mad to the point where I'd caress your skin while you sleep soundly each night. Wanting, needing to feel you from the inside and fill you. Grinding against you isn't enough anymore. What the fuck? You mean grinding is not enough for you? We What? Oh, Quinn, don't you get it? I'm opening my heart to you. I'm being forward. I'm being honest. Trust matters in a relationship, and I'm tired of keeping these things from you. Creep steps closer, his hands resting on the wall behind me. I love you. I loved you the moment I saw you at the diner. I wanted nothing more than to storm in and fuck you in front of everyone, letting them know that you belong to me and I to you, though that wasn't a proper way to approach you. So, I had to follow you instead, study your pattern, memorize your schedule, practice what you, what to say to you when you're finally alone and not working. The park was perfect to finally approach you. He smirks as he leans close to the dark glint was in his eyes as he cups my cheeks in his hands. You're upset with me now, sure, but you and I can make this work now. No more hiding, no more secrets, just us. Saying this, he parts his, lip a, parts his lips a little, a long and girthy tongue snaking out of his fang-filled maw. God, I could fuck you against this wall right now. What the fuck? What the fuck? No, stop. I'm actually getting chills. Stop, man. Bro, how the fuck do you run for it, bro? I'm scared you Yo, stop, bro. bro! Bro, 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 You're insane. The bastard chuckles. Yes, but it's all for you, love. Oh, fuck. I freeze as I... Feel it. I can't, I can't with this, I can't, I'm making such dumb choices. I freeze as, I freeze as I feel his lips against my cheek. I followed by the hot, wet sensation of a tongue trailing along my neck before he whispers. And if you tell anyone, I'll kill them too. Fuck. Saying this, he takes my hand into his, intertwining his fingers along with mine as he nips at my ear. I'll be by later tonight, dear. Oh my god! Holy shit. He doesn't say more as he pulls away, a crooked smile and lust in his eyes while he takes his leave out of the alley down and down the street. I take a moment to register what just happened, everything he told me, what he did. My attention is drawn back to TK, who is still waiting for me across the street. Oh god. I- Bruh, I can't, oh my gosh. I peeked out and looked around, making sure that fucker isn't lurking around before crossing the street. Thank god you're back. They say with a sigh of relief, but that relief is gone the moment they see the look on my face. Uh oh, what happened? That creep was just here, freaking nut job. He was at the diner yesterday and confessed he's been stalking me for months. He's even been breaking into my room at night, during the night. I say between clenched teeth, he might have killed whoever was in there too. TK almost turns as pale as I am upon hearing this. 
Oh, that fucker needs to be put away. Tell the folks here you know as what you know as soon as they allow us to get back, go back in. Who do you think he knocked off in there anyway? I don't know. It's not like I never even knew who. <gasps> oh my fucking god! Is it Lucy? Yo. Bro, is it dead ass Lucy? Bro, oh my god! No, bro, what? What is it? Oh god, Lucy wasn't at home this morning. Your roommate? Oh, stop, stop, please, not Lucy. Man, we had an amazing night, yo. You saw that? You saw that, bro? Man, she hot as fuck, yo. Get up, fuck. <laughs> bro. Is she dead now? Fuck that fucker, man. Fuck. I don't answer as I speed past TK and charge into the diner, pushing aside the still rattled officer as I make my way into the kitchen area. Oh my god. No. No, 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 no! I feel someone pulling me away from the scene, verbally demanding I keep my distance. No, that's my roommate! That's Lucy! Holy fuck, man. I am dragged back into the diner, TK coming to my side, attempting to calm me down. See, like, I just didn't take that fucking weed, man. Fuck! My outburst causes a scene. There are more questions than intended after identifying the body. I even have to tell I even tell them about the asshole and what he was doing before. Thankfully, TK was with me the entire time, keeping me mentally steady the best they could while I explained everything. Lucy, I'm so sorry. Fucker said he was going to be at my place tonight, but I don't want to go back there. The officers say they would be waiting for that bastard if he shows up. Thank God TK is blessed. It's a blessed being for letting me stay with them. The landlord receives my call about what happened and says that he'll be able, he, he'll be by shortly to check up on me. And I have never been so eager to see them before until now. That is. Here we are. Home sweet home. They say in a quiet tone, tossing their car keys down at, on the couch. The place is small, barely any room for two people, but it's better than taking my chances with my place. Thanks. I mutter, standing awkwardly in place. Do you want me to order something while we wait for your landlord? guess it'll be something like like shoopway or something oh, subway subway well that was quick tiki makes their way to the door a pinch hesitant to open it at first as they look through the people well it's not him they reassure as they unlatch the chain and open the door Lucy, bro. Lucy. Lucy. The landlord takes his time walking in, simply giving a nod to TK before turning his attention towards over me. Hey, I got a word of what happened. I don't say anything. I can't. What the hell can I say in a situation like this? Look. I really shouldn't be here right now since there might be shit going down tonight. I just wanted to check in on you to make sure you're okay. Okay is an overstatement. Well, what's going on? Have they found anything? We only got a hold of one person who saw her last. Some punk named Vio or something. He claims that she paid his bail and dropped him off at his place. Saying something about apply for dinner, died for the diner you're working at. So that's why she was there. 
I don't know what to say about this. All that time she left me with the rent. Making excuses as to why she's running behind on payments. She was busy paying to get others out of trouble. <laughs> oh, fuck! I'll see if I can get your friend here to live in with you. If that's fine with him. Uh, her? Them? <laughs> What? Isn't it obvious? The landlord stands there for a moment looking over TK while racking his brain about what to refer them as, to them as. Kid. <laughs> yeah, close enough. Anyway, I'd better get back to- I'd better get back before they realize I don't have a cell for them to call. The landlord is about to- is about ready to take his leave before coming to a slow halt, turning back around and looking over towards me. Hey, Quinn, don't beat yourself o up over this. It's not your fault. It's not your fault, Stewie. Uh, Stewie, it's not your fault. Okay. <laughs> if you want, we can meet up tomorrow and, I don't know, just forget about today for a couple hours. You need it. Um... I don't know. Okay, I don't. I need like a protector right now, and I feel like the landlord could give it. Cause, <laughs> you know, built. His build. I like that actually. Good, good. I'll see you tomorrow. Get some sleep. I, I get some sleep. I. Right. Okay. Thank you, sir. <laughs> you can just call me Don. There's no need for you to be so proper. With that, Don takes his leave, giving a glance back at a small wave before TK also bids him farewell, closing the door quietly behind him. Wow, that's your landlord? Not half bad for a backside of a backside. Oh my god, really? Okay, okay, yours is better. TK, I swear. Hey, can't blame me for not trying to line up the mood. Anyways, let's get you settled for in for the night. The couch folds into out into a bed and it's ten times cozier than my mattress. Thanks. It means a lot that you're willing to put up with me. I do that every day at work and I'm willing to do that every day at home. They say in their sincerest tone and hand their gently resting or their hand gently resting on my shoulder. The fuck man. I think Don forgot some why why are these knocks so harsh? I don't know. Let me take a look. TK walks over to the door once again looking through the peephole. Oh my god. It's all happening too quickly. Before I know it, the door is busted open, shoving TK to the ground and knocking them out. Oh, before I can respond, a tall dark figure charges at me, grabbing me by the throat so tight that I couldn't make a sound. Yo! Fuck 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 fuck. Told you. Tell. No. One. I try to fight back in some way, punching, kicking, lashing out. Clearly, I'm hurting, but his grip doesn't loosen one bit as he takes the hits. I can't breathe. It's time to go home, love. <sighs> Oh my god. I hate this guy. I hate this guy so much. Fuck. Fuck him. Ah. <sighs>